Hey! <laughs> so you want to know how to cure addiction. It's really simple when you boil it down to a few definitions. Okay, all addiction is just a habit that you can't stop doing. Now, what is a habit? A habit starts off by you making a choice, okay? It could be anything. You could be addicted. You could have a habit for uh, food, drugs, and alcohol, gym time, uh, driving. You, you can make an addiction out of anything, and you can have a habit for, again, anything. You start a habit by making a choice to, to bring an action into your life, okay? Even if that action is sitting still, you're still doing something, right? So you make a decision to start something, and have you heard the phrase, habits, they start out as spider webs and they end up as chains, All right? That fits very well here. Over time, you might train yourself. Say you're going to the gym. You're gonna you're gonna work out this year. Okay, so the first few days might be hard to kick yourself in the bum and get going to the gym. But if you do that, say every day or a few times a week, what have you, eventually that becomes a habit. You're like, no, Wednesday at this time, I go to the gym. That's what I do. That's your habit. Now Habits become addictions when those habits interfere with other parts of your life. So if you start going to the gym instead of picking your kids up from work, right? That, that might sound ridiculous. Bear with it, okay? You can have a social drinker. People drink alcohol. They've drank alcohol since... I don't even know. I don't know the history. But I know that it's very possible to have one drink and stop. I know it's possible to only drink on special occasions. I know it's very possible to be completely sober. But some people can't do those kinds of things. Some people have one beer and then another beer and then a few shots and then they're driving on the road because they have to get to the next bar and then they're at the next bar and they do some cocaine and then they're punching people in the face. And This would be an example of an addiction. <laughs> Because it's interfering with their life. It's interfering with their freedom. They're probably going to get arrested. They're probably going to have to go to court and do some kind of volunteer work. Their family, like, maybe you aren't quite that extreme, but maybe you sit at home and get kind of toasted. and You don't spend time with your family. You don't show up to events. You don't uh, participate in different events of your life, whether it's their life or yours. That would be an addiction. It's, it's real easy to go to drugs and alcohol. But uh, the same thing happens with food. Where you can't get something done because you're hungry and angry. You're hangry. Right? So you need to eat. You need to snack constantly. Oh, man. I just I haven't eaten for a few hours. I can't get something done. It, it's an addiction. It's not just a habit anymore. A habit is like I eat one meal a day. I eat at night. I do it every day. It doesn't interfere with any other part of my life. That's a habit. I put on my shoes before I leave the house. That's a habit. Do you see the difference? So now you understand how your choices, they, they start as a choice, they become a habit, and if they interfere with other parts of your life, they become an addiction. How do you cure an addiction, according to that? Well, you have to stop doing the thing. Right? Right? That's the trick. I know. I know. I'm I'm telling you the obvious. The sun rises in the east. Drink water or you'll de be dehydrated and die. If you want to beat an addiction, just stop. <laughs> Obviously, it's not that simple. You need to hit a wall. You need to overdose. You need to get way too drunk and make some drunk dials and completely embarrass yourself and decide that maybe you shouldn't drink like that anymore. You need to look in the mirror without a shirt on and, and realize that, oh my goodness, I'm carrying way more pounds than I've convinced myself otherwise. I don't look anything like what I think I look. I'm not proud of what I look like. I can't bring myself to a place of self-love while I look like this. You know, or I'm struggling to do so. So then you're like, what am I going to do? I'm going to fix it. I've run into the same thing. If you couldn't tell from the obvious subtle pointing here. You need to hit a wall. 
and people people are very caring first of all and thank you people for that whether you're in society or in a family and whatnot and so they mean well and i i bring this up because we we see in society people mean well for others they're like they see people struggling with addictions and they want to help them here is a needle exchange program for heroin addicts these people are human beings and they deserve access to clean needles are you kidding me it's a heroin addict they've made their choices okay they they deserve access to clean needles so they could just get high on the sidewalk what are you talking about they deserve compassion they deserve some some kind of direction to help them get on their feet not access to clean needles so they could just inconvenience everyone else and leave the needles lying around and get high at their disposal like, what value are they bringing to society really think about that that's a rant in and of itself but the people who support these needle exchanges in this case they come from a good place they're coming from a place of compassion I believe it's just a little misdirected. Those addicts need to hit a wall. I don't know a single one that got sober without some kind of scaring themselves. They either looked in the mirror and said, uh, I need to change my ways. They made their own wall. Or they royally messed up. Like, uh, like the example I gave earlier. Binge drinking and making a fool of yourself. Some people get in cars and harm other people because they've been drinking and they choose to drive. Sometimes those people choose to stop drinking. Sometimes they don't. It all depends on if the person with the addiction realizes that wall is in front of them. If they, if they acknowledge the wall that they're hitting, that's when they'll make the change. No one is going to break their addictions until they want to. No one's going to change until they want to. No one's going to get better unless they want to. So it sounds, it sounds messy. It sounds like a lack of compassion. It sounds frustrating. Like, oh, we're, we're trying to implement a solution. And Luke, you're just saying get rid of that implementation. No, I'm saying that a needle exchange program isn't going to fix the heroin epidemic at all. It's not going to fix it. In fact, I would guess it makes it worse, but I'm not linking any studies. I'm not providing any proof. This is all anecdotal opinion. I grew up around addicts in, in all kinds of situations, actively addicted people to drugs and alcohol, to food. Oh my God. Uh, lots of obese people that I grew up around as well. And then later in life, interacting with people in Narcotics Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, all kinds of rehab. So you have to drive people to a different rehab clinic and pick them up and, and they stay on your couch for a week and then they relapse. And it's just an example of addiction. The way you get through it is by hitting a wall and you decide to what? Stop doing it. And it really is that simple. You're going to want to change it more than you want to keep doing it. That's it. That's it. You're trying to lose weight. Say you're you're incorporating a 24-hour fast into your eating schedule every week because you're going to lose weight. Right? On that day, you're going to get hungry. Halfway through that day, you're going to stare at your normal food at a fridge and that battle will be going inside you between do I want to get more in shape or do I want to eat? Whichever one wins will determine your actions. So you have to find that in yourself. You have to find your walls. You have to either create them for yourself in the, in the image of standing in a mirror and judging yourself, or you have to go roll the car. I'd recommend the first one. Recommend the first one. Essentially, if you don't control your habits and they become addictions, then you are a slave to that addiction, okay? You control your habits, or the habits control you. 
You don't want to be a slave to your addictions. That's where the wall actually frees you from that. You actually get to be free from your addictions by hitting the wall voluntarily, moving past them, trying to, which you can do. So yeah, there's a, a little bit of my opinions on some things and hopefully some direction for you. If you're struggling with any kind of uh, addiction in your life, and it can be simple. It could be video games where you should be doing stuff and instead I'm going to load up some kind of entertainment. <laughs> Oof. I realized that I can't do that anymore. I sat down with my wife and deleted everything off my computer and I had no idea how freaking distracting that was in my life. It just, it still comes up. I'm still sitting there like, I could do something other than what I'm doing. I could install a game today or I could get more done and you know make the life that I want to live for myself and actually be productive. And one day I'll be really old. I'll be really old and crippled, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> And all I'll be able to do is play video games. Great. Keep a backlog. You'll you have years of entertainment. Grandkids and video games. And by then, the VR is going to be so good. Oh, as you can see, I'm a little addicted. But right now, I want to focus on career goals, on family goals, on, on financial stuff more than I want to play a game. And that's it. That's, that's the trick to it. So hopefully some of this was useful to you. Good luck. Know that people care about what you're going through and you're not alone with it. Everyone has experienced whatever it is you're experiencing. All of it. Whether it's an argument with someone, an addiction to food, an addiction to drugs and alcohol, it doesn't matter. There is a support group. There's someone that understands. There's someone that wants to join you in your addiction. You're not alone. So don't feel like you have to take on this addiction by yourself. And good luck. Comment down below what kind of walls you've made for yourself. Bye.